So the title of my talk is The Science of Morality, No Gods Required. And I want to talk about this no gods required part first. Because a lot of people think that you can't have morality without God. And in fact, I was raised a Christian, lived 20 years of my life as a Christian, and I thought that you couldn't have morality without God. And in fact, I even thought that without God, that's, that's me young and Christian and thinking you need God for morality, um, <laughs> I, I thought that uh, not only did you need God for morality, but you probably needed God just to be motivated to do good. I mean, if you didn't have the love of God or the fear of hell, wouldn't you just do whatever you wanted to and be really selfish and everything? And so those crazy atheists who don't believe in God and don't have hell to fear must be out there doing whatever they wanted to. That's what I thought. Those crazy atheists. They're probably out there, you know, doing whatever, like eating babies. <laughs> or uh, having orgies, or, uh, I don't know, giving drugs to chipmunks, or whatever. <laughs> some, they're really up to some shenanigans, I figured. But then, a little bit later in my life, I did some serious studying. Serious studying, I was very dedicated. And I lost my faith in God, and that, actually this was very traumatic for me, but I, I lost my faith in God, and I lost my fear of hell, and what do you know, I didn't suddenly want to, like, kill people or give drugs to chipmunks or eat babies or anything. By the way, I noticed this this morning, you can actually see a tick on my neck right there. It's pretty cool. Um, so, I was wrong that you needed God to be motivated to be moral, but, oh, and I still wanted to help save the world and stuff, me and Master Chief. So I still cared about people. I still had compassion for people on the other side of the planet that I would never meet. I still wanted to see people prosper, even though I didn't uh, have a love for God anymore, and I didn't have a fear of hell. But maybe that's not what people mean when they say that you can't have morality without God. I mean, obviously, you can act morally without God. The, the two, in fact, the two biggest philanthropists in world history are atheists, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. So maybe the idea isn't that you need God to act morally, but something else. And I think the idea is that if God does not exist, then nothing is really right or really wrong. If God doesn't exist, then it's all just a matter of human opinion. I mean, if the world is just quarks and electrons and fermions and bosons bouncing off of each other, how could there be objective moral value or what some things that are really right or really wrong in the world? That's the concern. But, on the other hand, moral philosophers have been doing moral philosophy mostly without God for about 300 years now. So, why would you think that if God doesn't exist, you couldn't, there couldn't be objective moral values in the world? And I want to take a quick closer look at this claim. This is how one Christian apologist and philosopher, William Lane Craig, puts it. He says, without God, objective moral values do not exist. Without God, objective moral values do not exist. Now, I want to point out right away that that's a really strange claim to make, because what does objective moral values mean? Well, it means moral values that are not just grounded in the attitudes of a person, but grounded in something beyond just attitudes of people. Uh, so some examples, if, you, if you, what you call morally good is whatever Ozzy Osbourne approves of, that's not objective morality, that's subjective. It's grounded in the attitudes or opinions of a person. Or if you think whatever is morally good is whatever Paris Hilton approves of, uh, that's subjective, individual subjectivism. Or if you think that whatever is morally good in Germany is whatever Germans approve of, that's cultural subjectivism. Or if you think whatever is good in, J in Japan is whatever Japanese people approve of, that's cultural subjectivism. It's grounded in the attitudes or opinions of, of people. And then theistic subjectivism is the same thing. It's grounded in the attitudes of a particular person, a very unusual person, named God. And whatever God approves of, that's what's moral. And that's a subjective moral theory. If God approved of rape, rape would be morally right. If God approved of slavery, slavery would be morally right. 
And so these are all subjective theories for the exact same reason. They all depend that the, the truth makers for what's morally right or wrong are all uh, attitudes or opinions of people. So let's go back to what Craig said. Without God, objective moral values do not exist. How does that square with the, uh, the understanding that objective moral value refers to moral value that's not just grounded in the attitudes of a person? How does that work? Because I want to say to Craig, actually, with God-based ethics, objective morality couldn't exist. Because God-based ethics is subjective. It's grounded in the attitudes of a person. Now, Craig is a very educated guy, and he knows this. He knows that this is what objective and subjective mean in moral philosophy. So how does he get off saying that without God, objective moral values do not exist? Well, he does it by using a different definition for what objective moral values mean. To Craig, and he's very explicit about this, to him, it's objective moral value if it's moral value that's not grounded in the attitudes of a particular species of primate, homo sapiens. And that's how he gets to say that God-based morality is objective. But that's a really weird definition for objective morality, because think about it. If aliens from another planet appeared in the sky tomorrow, and somebody decided to say, OK, what's morally good is what the aliens approve of. Dr. Craig would say that that is an objective theory of morality, just because it's grounded in attitudes that are not homo sapien attitudes. Or if we decided to define moral terms in, in terms of what uh, a particular chimpanzee approved of or liked, to Craig, that would be an objective theory of morality. Now, look, they're just words. You can define words however you want, but it's just not useful to so radically define a term that it refers to something that nobody's ever meant by it before. So it really looks to me like this is kind of a sneaky trick to try to say that God-based morality is objective when really it's always been a subjective moral theory until about the 1980s when Craig started talking about it as if it was objective. So that's just one problem with objective uh, with uh, God-based morality. The other is the youth dilemma. I won't go into that. The really big problem is the problem of not God, God not existing. That's a really big problem for God-based ethics. Um, so there are lots of problems with God-based morality, and there are more that don't fit on a slide very well. So I don't think God-based morality is objective.